Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ray, and welcome to the RayWenderlich.com podcast. In this podcast, we'll keep you up to date with the latest app development tech talk. Now, here are your hosts, Drew Freeman and Susanna Skyer Gupta. Thanks, Ray. This is the RayWenderlich.com podcast. Welcome to episode 10 for season 12. This episode was recorded on Wednesday, the 2nd of March, 2022, for release on the 23rd of March. Usually we have something amusing to say about sponsorship, and perhaps next season we'll be back with some actual sponsors, but today we want to say something else. Here at waywinderlick.com, we are a group of over 300 developers from all around the world, from countries including Ukraine and including Russia, and our hearts are with everyone affected by this terrible war, including our colleagues, including you, our listeners, So starting in this episode and continuing for as long as it's needed, you'll find a list of ways to hashtag stand with Ukraine in the show notes. Thank you for understanding. And now on with the show. I'm your host, Drew Freeman, along with my co-host, Susanna Skyer Gupta. Thanks, Drew. This episode, we'll talk with Hanan Banachi Diaz. Hanan is expert in both iOS and Ruby on Rails. He works in fintech for the Brazilian investment management company, XP Inc. Here at RayWenderlich.com, he writes tutorials and more to help the rest of us improve our iOS programming skills. Hanan speaking with us this evening from the city of Campo Grande in West Central Brazil. Oh, Hanan, welcome to the show. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. We're very excited to have you here. So first, let me just check. What time zone are you in? Um, GMT minus four, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay. So what time is it there right now? It's, it's 7 PM. So you're, okay. so you're, you're, uh, you're in almost like a Nova Scotia time period, the, the Atlantic you're, you're East of New York. Yeah. Yeah. I'm East of New York. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. I didn't and- think about that. And yeah, so he's southern. even so he's a little bit later than you, Drew. Mm-hmm. And it's southern hemisphere, which means you are just now coming through the last bits of summer. Uh yes, yes, we are we are just about to finish summer here. Oh wild. <laughs> That's so much fun. So so let me ask the, the question we've been asking everybody. How is everything pandemic-wise? Are you locked down? Are you safe and everybody close to you okay? Yes, yes, everything's everything's good around here. Uh, you know, uh, it's been a crazy ride this pandemic, uh, but you know, trying to follow all the safety precautions and you know, stay at home you know, as much as we can. Even though we feel like oh, it's too much time at home, uh, we we try to find other ways, like go to the park and you know, always wear a mask and and trying to to be safe. <laughs> Does it feel there? like you're coming to the end of it. I know to me in the U.S. state of Arizona, which is not known for being good about restrictions at any point, um, Mm -hmm. it it really does feel like maybe we're we're almost done or we're done. How does it feel by you? Yeah, it feels like it's, you know, getting to the end. You know, uh, you can see like uh, shopping malls and restaurants uh, like only require you to wear a mask but they're not checking your temperature or anything like that. Um, but, you know, everyone's wearing a mask. Everyone's trying to, to stay as safe as possible. Uh, we, we just had, I just had like the second shot of the Jensen uh, vaccine uh, and everyone's okay. getting the, the, the third, the, the booster and so on. So it, it does feel like the end, but we, we are trying to be as careful, you know, me and my family and everyone that I know, try to be as careful as possible so that we don't, you know, get sick again. Right, right. That, that's wonderful to hear. Um, all right, yeah, so and, and go ahead. Please go. No, I was going to, to ask, like, and how about you guys? Uh, how does it feel? Oh, thank there? you. Uh, I've been personally lucky that myself and my my immediate family, none of us have have been hit by it yet. We are all inoculated and boosted, and we've been very fortunate. Uh, Susanna? Well, so I was just reading that they're estimating that like 43% of all Americans have had it, but a lot of us have gotten in such a mild or asymptomatic way that we didn't realize. 
So none of us were sick that we knew of, right? But I wonder, Mm -hmm. you know, I just wonder. And we, so similarly, we got all the vaccinations, the boosters. We were early on getting all of those. Like we have a, when we were living in Chicago, I now live in Arizona. um, We had friends who were doctors, uh, a friend who was an immunologist. So he was like, inviting friends to his house to give the boosters. So we got, you know, so we got our boosters that way. So, um, so, so I'll be early and kind of wear party. off. Yeah. That, so that, that's not the kind of party that when I normally go to, <laughs> I, you know, it's a super great kind of party these days. Um, but we're like, so they, so the U S center for disease control has dropped the indoor mask mandate and Arizona mm-hmm. as a state never had one. So I go to the gym, I don't wear a mask and I've stopped wearing a mask elsewhere indoors too. And, you know, maybe that's foolish. I'm not sure, but that's, that's why I'm the one in the broadcast saying, oh, I think it's over because it feels (laughs) that way here. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. So let's, let's turn to topics a little more close to home. How did you wind up getting hooked up with raywenderlich.com and being a contributor? Yeah, tell us your origin uh, story. (laughs) My origin story. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's been two years, I think, that I've been writing for uh, the website. Uh, And and I I was, you know, I was already a a reader, an an avid reader. Uh, I think I access the website every day. Uh, Eventually, for just like, okay, is there a new article or is there a new video? Uh, and, uh, And then... I saw this, I think it was a post on the website saying like, oh, we're looking for authors. And uh, if you feel like it, just, you know, send us your resume and then we can start the process. I was like, oh, why not? Right. <laughs> like, uh, I, it's something that I like. It's something that I've been reading for quite some time now. Uh, maybe I can, can try to become an author. And, uh, and then the process started and uh, everything worked out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so and how so- much? Go ahead. I have to share here part of my origin story. So a couple of years after that, just about a year ago, I saw a similar post and I went through and I'll say more about this in, in the episode, that, in the next episode, but uh, the very first article that I worked on, which was as a technical editor was Henan was the author and he was, and I was nervous about this because I don't have as listeners know, Drew knows, And Hanan knows too from having worked with me. I don't have the deep technical chops of many of the rest of the iOS editorial team. I have very strong content and leadership chops that that allow me to do something useful here. But you, Hanan, I really appreciate how incredibly patient you were with my like a bazillion <laughs> questions because it was the first work I'd ever done here. And no, I, come on. <laughs> it, and so, it, so, so you were the first person I worked with here at raywonderlick.com. And I was like, Oh, I love this place. And here we are a couple of years, you know, not even hey. like a year and a half later. So. Wonderful. <laughs> so, so how much have you, how much have you done now for, for Ray Wenderlick? A couple of tutorials, a couple of, uh, what else have you done? I think I have around four or five uh, tutorials, articles in the website, uh, and now now I'm, I'm part of the you know the real uh, iOS uh, by tutorials uh, book, um, and there are a couple of other side projects that we were you know talking about, but uh, nothing that it's out yet. I'm really looking forward to real world iOS by tutorials, and I really want to pick your brain about some of this book. Uh, I know we both want to really pick your brain about this book. Uh, let me let me ask you this: How is this book separate from iOS by tutorials? Oh, okay. Uh, so, like, this book started because there's there's a counterpart book, right? The Android uh, Real World Android by Tutorials, right? <laughs> and the purpose of this book was to like teach readers from the beginning to the end, how to develop an app, right? Uh, So unlike the iOS by tutorials or any other book, uh, we don't 
we have a single project that you start working on the first chapter and ends in the last chapter. Uh, so, and, and this has been actually a very, very, uh, you know, extremely hard challenge for us because, you know, oh, syncing all the chapters and all the, the sample projects so that everything matches up was a real nightmare. Uh, but uh, in the end, everything's getting together. And, uh, you know, the, the, the real purpose is this, like, this is the, the project that we are working on. And every single chapter we start, we work on a, a, a part of the project until it's finished. And so There's, the sample app that people come out with must be like really fully featured, like, you know, something you definitely can look back on. And when you want to do something in your own app, can remind yourself how you did it in the sample app and hopefully, you know, borrow some of that code. Yeah. Yeah. So every chapter we finish with uh, like uh, with something done, like a feature or maybe a, a layer of the application. And then the next, the next uh, chapter starts off from that final uh, sample project. Uh, obviously there are a couple of, you know, things that we add on the starter project so that we don't right. uh, waste the, the reader's time. But uh, we are, the, the main focus is this, like let's start building an app, an application from start, from start to finish. And let's show them like real world problems, uh, problems that you are going to face while developing a professional iOS app. Wonderful. So can, can, can you give us a hint as to what the app is that you're building? Oh yeah, uh, like the the app is the same one that it's on the Android book. So it's uh, it's called PetSafe, and we are using the Pet Finders API to browse pets, and then you can uh, you know uh, adopt pets and search pets by name, by age, and type, uh, and uh, all the but and and you you know readers are going to build every single feature uh, for this app in this book. Wonderful. And will there be warning notifications like if this is a dog that's about to turn 10 and has been returned multiple times, there could be a reason don't adopt this pet? I'm just uh, saying, I just <laughs> didn't adopt a dog like that. <laughs> well, not yet, but that could be an appendix of the chapter of the, <laughs> the book. <laughs> Extra challenge. And yeah. Drew, your one of your adopted pets has just one of my adopted us. saved cats from a from a no-kill shelter has just arrived. Uh, when you watch this on YouTube in a few weeks, you'll be able to see the cat. Um, <laughs> so what is the difference now? This is, this is the first book you've done. What's the difference yeah. between doing a tutorial and doing a book? How has that been different for you? Well, interestingly enough, uh, I think it's quite similar, uh, especially because the books are in the, uh, like tutorials, uh, you know, um, way of, of writing. Um, but uh, I do feel that we have more room for, you know, explaining stuff and then being, uh, you know, funny about something and then bringing a joke or maybe uh, making some parallels. And we have a lot of more room to, you know, use an entire chapter just to explain a single concept or maybe mm. uh, a subject that's very interesting to, to the reader. Uh, and we, and then, you know, with an article, you have to do it in a single article or maybe in a two-part article. Uh, but I would say it's very similar to writing writing the, the articles. I think that's a good point, though, that it's when you're working on an individual article, that word limit is really restrictive. Like it's there for a reason because we don't want mm -hmm. our readers to be like, okay, I don't even want to deal with this. This is just way too long. But it's, you know, there's always more to say yeah and and we we still have that word limit actually but we are very more we are way more flexible about this so i think there were two chapters that i wrote that went over the limit but we felt that uh we needed that content so that the chapter would feel complete and that readers could read from the beginning to the end and understand like okay this is what i'm learning in this chapter uh but it's definitely it's definitely feels more like I would say uh, relaxed, you know, when we're writing a book and then uh, it feels more, I, I feel more connected to the reader. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. So what do we expect a reader to come in knowing before she's ready to read real world iOS? 
Uh, I think uh, readers should should be you know they should understand the basics of iOS development and maybe the basics of Swift UI. Uh, we are you know this is a book that's entirely written in Swift UI. We are, we are not using. Oh, nice. I, I, I actually maybe you are using a bit of UI kit, but just just a little bit to bridge you know UI components to UI kit components to Swift UI. Um, but you know they should. They should understand the concepts of uh, Swift UI and the basics of iOS development. But I would say this is a, you know, uh, it's it, it it is a book for beginners, right? It's big for beginners and intermediate uh, developers. Okay. Is there any uh, combine in there? Uh, aside from the you know the property wrappers that we use with Swift UI, like state and observable. Uh, object and observable observed objects. Uh, we we decided to use a sync await uh, with networking and so on. So uh, there's just you know the, a tiny bit of combine. So probably we'd send people to our combine book to learn more. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, I feel like uh, and and this is a subject that I, I see a lot of people discussing over in the internet. Like, uh, is combined dead uh, because of async await and and the the new uh, structured uh, asynchronous model? And that's just and? Uh, you know that that's just not how things work, <laughs> right? Like, uh, they are both tools that uh, you can use on a variety of problems. And I I usually say like there's no right there's no single tool that fixes every single problem. Uh, you have the right tool for the right problem, and 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 so on. It's one of my favorite adages: right tool for the right job. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, who else is working on the book with you? Uh, Jeff Stills worked on the book too. He's an author, and uh, Akib Hussein is also uh, working on this book. They're both authors. Um, Liberner is also working on the book. He's uh, our final pass editor. And uh, I I'm sorry, I can't remember the, the surname of everyone, but Pinal is also working on the book. She's uh, a technical editor. And Kenny also is working on the book. And then Sandra's the, the lead of books now, right? Yeah, yeah. We started with uh, Amanda, uh, but now she's a social, social media correspondent, right? Or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Community. I think community manager. Community and manager. We'll, community, you know, community. All, yeah, yeah. We're all going to get to see as as the days and months unfold what cool things that mean that means for people using the website, you know? Yeah. I yeah, love that. Absolutely. I love how you start saying, you know, like every day. You'd look and say, "Oh, what's new here? Is there a new video? Is there a new?" So I think part of what Amanda's going to be doing is making a more accessible, um, "Hey, what's new?" experience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. people feel even more tightly tied to other people learning with RayWenderlich.com. Yeah, I, I mean, sorry, please go on. No, 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 no. You're the guest. You speak. <laughs> yeah, no. I was just going to say, like, uh, yeah, I feel like. The, the way for me, you know, uh, I'm a very curious person. I'm, a person, I'm, I'm someone that's always, always trying to learn something new. So every day I open uh, RayWareInDemand.com, every day I open the Swift forums, uh, and I'm always trying to like, okay, what's new? What are people talking about? What what can I learn today? And I think that Manda is going to do a fantastic job, you know, summarizing what's new in the RayWareInDemand.com website. Yeah, I'm excited to see what, what we what community means in terms of how the website changes you know and mm -hmm. new ways we can interact and interact with you know because now we're behind the scenes but new ways we can interact with other yeah, partners yeah. absolutely so i have to ask you and you said this um as we were preparing for this episode too uh, what so what's it like writing in not your native language and writing a book in not your native language i mean you would <laughs> like you can't really tell talking to you, but I know it's, but I know you're not, um, English isn't your first language. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it has been a crazy experience because, uh, you know, it's my first book. Uh, so I don't have that much writing experience. Uh, and, and, not, and it's not only my first book, it's, 
a book that's not my my native language, right? Uh, but you know, definitely the the experience that I had right writing the articles helped me a lot. And uh, you know, the the technical editors, the English editor, they help so much. Like they do an amazing job. And usually, you know, I feel like uh, you know maybe they're they feel like they're doing behind the scenes, but they they do so much for us. They help so much. And, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. Uh, like uh, English and you're right. English is not my, my native language. Uh, I studied English for eight years, I think, or eight or, or so. Oh, wow. And, uh, but, uh, unfortunately, uh, over time we, you start, if you don't use it, like if you don't practice, uh, you start to forget things. And, you know, my, I feel like my accent is, it's very strong nowadays uh because i don't have anyone to to actually practice i i only read and write in english but uh it has been an amazing experience i, I don't i feel like i didn't have any hiccups or any problems writing uh this book uh, aside from the the regular problems that you know while writing creative right. creativity problems <laughs> yeah no writing is just super hard if you want to practice more we'll always have you back on the show <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> so let me let me rewind you a little bit more off of uh ray wendler we we talked about the fact that you do ruby on rails and you do ios mm. which one did you come to first um i think it was like professionally speaking i think it was ruby on rails mm -hmm. uh i started working at this company here in my hometown and i you know we worked on pairs and my pair uh, was finishing a project uh, with using Ruby on Rails, and uh, they were also using Ruby on Rails to write the front end uh, part of the project. And but but shortly after, uh, you know, the focus of him was iOS development. So I shortly after we went to another project that was entirely uh, iOS developed, an iOS app. And, and then we had to, and then I had to like, okay, I have to learn again uh, iOS development but the first time that i actually like uh experienced ios development was uh in college uh through a program from i think it was eldorado and uh campinas college called hacker truck which is like a huge uh truck that they go from university to university uh teaching ios development uh, and, How fun. and other, yeah, and, and it was really, really interesting. They they arrived at my my university, and there was a contest because there were like I think ninety uh, positions that you could you know uh, they they couldn't teach everyone, uh, and and so I I managed to to get a position, and uh, that that was my first uh, experience with Swift. Uh, we were still in Swift two, I think. Or, Did or you have nine? an an Apple device yourself at that point? I think I think I had an iPhone at that time, but okay. just that I, I, I at that point I I've never had like a MacBook or uh, I, I did have an iPad and I did have an iPhone, but uh, I I barely used Mac OS or right. any other. And so you never uh, like you never opened Xcode until that point. No, no, no. It was my first time opening Xcode and like, oh, this is so interesting. Like I, I've only known Android Studio or Sublime Text or something like that. And then it was a complete shock for me because well, well this this is so well, this is so pretty, this is so organized, and like I really like this. <laughs> and I really like Swift or like Xcode. I want to do this. <laughs> so it was a, a very interesting experience for me. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. So let's move into some of the jobs that you've had. You are working in fintech. Yeah. Let's 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 explain fintech so people understand. How do you explain that? Uh, so fintech usually are companies, startups that uh, are working in the uh, financial uh, business, right? Uh, so XP uh, Investments is uh, it's the company that I'm working on, working with right now, uh, and we are in the stock exchange uh, business. Uh, we help uh, our users uh, 
make better investments, understand and have a better financial uh, education, right? And you guys are an international company. Yeah, I think you're traded on the U.S. NASDAQ as well as probably on yeah, yeah. And, a Brazilian exchange and, also. Yeah, and that was, I think, rather recently we, we became an international company. I think it's just about a year or so. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we are definitely an international company. Yeah, and fintech is not just startups because we had... so. We had was it David Oaken gave the um, gave a professional development webinar mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and he's the head of iOS for Charles Schwab, which is a, a company I use for investments. And I thought, mm-hmm. oh wow, that's really cool that it, like you know those two worlds colliding. And I have one of my kids works as a developer for PayPal, so there are some mm-hmm. huge non startup mm-hmm. fintech things and. And anything financial and technical. Right. Um, so one of the things, Hanan, that you shared when we were researching, like, oh, what do we want to talk about today? Mm-hmm. Is, you know, I said, oh, what's it like working in that sector? Like, especially for somebody who's considering where their next job should be. You know, do you have to be like somebody who's, oh, I live and breathe investments. I super love money. <laughs> And like everything about making money and, you know, so that, that wasn't your background. Like that wasn't what drew you to it. Right. Mm, Not at all. Not at all. I mean, uh, surprisingly enough, I had like, I I was feeling like, oh my God, I'm going to this company that, you know, probably everyone is like that, like money and and, and investment. uh, uh, But no, that's just not true. Uh, I, for one, am like, I barely understand like stock exchange and investments. Uh, I do understand what I need to understand to develop my features and and you know ship features, but uh, no, it's it's I would say it's just like any other company uh, out there. Uh, it's yeah, you know here at XP we have a very uh, lightweight and uh, I would say uh, very very friendly uh, environment, right? So everyone takes care of each other. We are always talking to each other and, and doing meetings so that uh, we understand how we're doing and how uh, the project's going. Uh, so I, I completely entered the, the, the company with that that idea in my head and was shattered in the first thing. Like everyone was so nice and everyone was like, uh, and that's that's okay that you don't understand this. I'll explain it to you. I'll uh, give you some some resources to learn about it. Uh, so it has been a, a very, very nice experience. Do you feel oh, like um, there's like a primer on, you know, if somebody's considering applying for a role in a fintech company, like what should he know about the sector going in? Uh, I feel like the basics itself, uh, understanding like, uh, you know, just downloading the, the app itself and then trying to, to understand a bit or even reading about it online. Uh, I think that that would be enough. Uh, I, for one, uh, entered the company knowing zero about like my my financial uh, uh, education was like the basics of everything, uh, and and every everyone was so nice. Like everyone was like, okay, if you don't understand about it, that's okay. I can teach you. I can um, explain it to you. Uh, and and it was uh, it it has been very very interesting. Now, how long have you been with XP now? Uh, it, I have been with them, I think, one year and six months or so, something something like that. And and you've been responsible for bringing in Swift UI, is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, so we, I started the movement to change, like to start using Swift UI on the project. Uh, ever since uh, I entered the company, we were targeting iOS 12 at the time. But shortly after we moved to iOS 13, and then you know my my evil brand started to my evil brand started to like okay I can I can put Sutoi on this project, uh, but it took me about a year or so to actually get the courage to do to do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, like it 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 was just you know like the the fear of actually supporting something new right and then something that no one is using here in the company. But uh, it worked out great. Uh, we started using SwiftUI in our app, 
And uh, did we you have like about, refactor yeah. everything that was there? Were you like, okay, we need like one new view? And you were like, okay, uh, we're going to make that view in Swift UI, or like how? How exactly yeah, we, did you do that? We still like uh, most of the projects still using UI Kit. Uh, I would say probably ninety percent of the project is using UI Kit. Uh, and the, the first time that I used Swift UI was for a new feature. Like uh, we had this, this new feature that had like, I think five or six screens uh, in, the, in the flow. And then uh, I've, one of the screens was just a static text information view, right? Like uh, explaining to the, to the user, like how the login process was going to work and the new login process. And then I was like, okay, this is a fairly simple screen. I could use Swift UI for this. It would, you know, I would be done in a in a GIF. And then I talked to my to my manager. I talked to my pair, and they were like, just go do it. Like it's it's okay. We we are we're gonna we are uh, we're gonna support you. And I was like, are you guys sure? Are you really going to be using a new technology here? Uh, even though I was like crazy to 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 use it. Uh, and then it worked out fine. And then I was like, okay, uh, maybe next feature I'll maybe use two screens in Swift UI or maybe three. And then things just got out of control. I started using Swift UI for every single uh, new feature that we we were developing. Uh, so like we still have a lot of things in UI Kit and a lot of uh, new stuff that we're doing is in Swift UI. And we are already building components and views that to reuse in older UI kit views. Uh, but we are moving slowly. We're taking things slow uh, just to make sure that we bro don't break anything. <laughs> and you've also picked up async await, uh, await in a few places too. Yeah, yeah. When uh, I, when Xcode 13.2, I think, came out, uh, I saw the opportun opportunity. And I was like, okay, maybe this could work out here. And then I, I actually first I, I created a proof of concept uh, sample project, uh, showing them like and, and, and presented to my team like okay so this is a sync await uh, it's a new future feature you guys heard about it uh, maybe we could use uh, in our project and they were very excited to to start using this so I started you know every single new feature is using a sync await now. That okay, so it's so it's very, very much impressive. a just do it approach. Like, if like if if somebody else is listening and thinking, well, how am I going to get my workplace to change? Well, you present mm -hmm. you present why it's good, and maybe do a little like teach in on it, and then just like every new thing that comes across your personal desk, you're like, actually, I coded this one in Swift UI. Actually, this one mm -hmm. uses async await, and so, and then they're present with that. Yeah, that uh, I feel like. I, I feel like my team, they, they, I've de developed a trust between me and my team. So they trust me uh, to do this and they and understand like, okay, what are the risks? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? And uh, they, they, they felt like, okay, he, he knows what he's doing and uh, we, we want to support this change. Uh, so it was fairly, it, you know, it took me a while because I was scared of doing this. I was scared, like, okay, we're going to be adding this new feature. Like what, it, and there was a lot of things that could go wrong. For example, like, okay, RSCI, uh, what if it's not using the latest Xcode, it's going to break. So I'm going to have to update that as well. I'm going to have to update our documentation and so on. Uh, but in the end, uh, I, you know, we talked about it and they were like super supported. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And everything worked out. Uh, there were a couple of hiccups, uh, like, uh, you know, bridging uh, completion handlers to a sync await and the network uh, component and, and so on. But uh, those were, you know, challenges that we would face anyway when uh, down the line when we were switching to Swift UI or a sync await. So it was very, very, it was a very interesting experience. And, and it's very fulfilling actually using these new technologies, right? Because they're the, uh, you know, new stuff that Apple's uh, giving us to, to develop iOS apps. So just for comparison, how big is your team? My team is fairly uh, small. We are about, uh, let me see, 
I think eight or ten people. Uh, we we are actually uh, responsible for the advisors app. So XP has a, a bundle of apps, uh, and there's the clients app, and then there's the advisors app that get all the information to make proposals to the clients and also uh, to give them information on how to uh, do better investments. Uh, and we are a fairly small team in the company, uh, but we are constantly talking to other uh, teams to you know make uh, cross uh, platform uh, UI components and also other you know code components that we use in all our apps. So the eight of you are all iOS. Oh no no no! Uh, it's just uh, it, the whole team's eight ten people, uh, but. There's only me and another person working on the iOS. Got it. And then is Android on the same team? And do you have like a designer on your team and then maybe a scrum master? Or... Yeah, we have uh, we have two iOS developers, two Android uh, developers, uh, one designer, one uh, product owner, uh, one scrum master, and uh, two backend developers as well. And are there other iOS developers elsewhere in the company who are working on different apps? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, the, I think the clients, app, the clients uh, app, iOS app has around, I don't know, maybe 16, 20 iOS developers or so. But wow, they're that's all, a big difference. They, yeah, they're they're all they're all uh, spread out. You know, like the uh, credit card part of the app or the login mm -hmm. and uh, and notification part of the app. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so they are spread out in different teams. Do they ever do? Do you do like a like let's all learn together kind of? You know, all iOS devs within the company are gonna you know chat about certain like cool new thing I learned in Swift UI or a really great thing we're doing with async await or. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, every every Friday actually. Uh, oh, and good. It was it was one of the, those Fridays that I uh, presented the the you know to all the iOS uh, developers in the company. And I think like uh, the clients the clients iOS app has about twenty developers, but in like in the whole company there is about I don't know forty or fifty iOS developers. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, th there's a lot of people, and and then uh, we I presented them like, hey, uh, we are using Swift Package Package Manager here. We are moving away from Cocoa Pods, and uh, we started doing this for a while. And I wanted to show you guys what we had, and maybe it's interesting for you guys to do it later uh, in your own project. Uh, and also at the end, uh, the time I, I I included a sneak peek like, oh, we are also using SwiftUI. Uh, like get ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, having now dug into Swift UI with the book, mm -hmm. was there anything that you found that was something really new to you that you really loved? Mm, I feel like uh, in the book I had the opportunity to actually uh, face. Real, like, <laughs> and I know, like, the, the name of the book is Real World iOS Development, right? But real world problems, right? Uh, because uh, so far, my experience with SwiftUI were like side projects and uh, obviously right. writing articles, uh, never like a, a full app. And then uh, I started working on the book way before we started using SwiftUI uh, in my team. So I felt like I had to, I, 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 I faced a lot of real world problems like, okay, how can I use this API in a way that uh, it still follows our design, it still follows Apple's guidelines and uh, it still can uh, achieve the feature that we're trying to, to develop. Um, and uh, I feel like I had to study a lot and, and because I already had like a, a fairly good understanding of SwiftUI but I had to, especially, especially for a single feature, I had to understand a lot about Swift generics and view builders and, uh, and result builders in Swift. Some fun things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, it's, 
they're uh, I would say like fairly uh, like advanced topics, but still they are very important to understand like how they work under the hood and how you can actually use them on your day to day uh, coding, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Do you have anything else you want to touch on uh, development wise, Susanna? Um, say more about what what was challenging and how you dealt with it in um, working, putting Swift UI and UI kit together. Mm. I mean, is it really just as simple as like if I have new screens I want to add to an existing project, I just you know choose new Swift mm -hmm. UI view and code up what I want and mm -hmm. like how does how does like the how you deal with data is totally different. Like, how do you make that work? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's completely different, right? Uh, we change paradigms when we were working with Rikid and then Swift UI. Uh, but I felt it was fairly easy to bridge them, uh, especially because Apple has given us like great tools to do this. Um, when, I mean, when you're working with fairly simple screens that are just, you know, like, an information screen or maybe even a feature that has a dynamic data that you're manipulating or adding or whatever uh you know just putting that that entire swift ui view inside a ui kit flow it's fairly easy you just use a ui hosting controller and it, you can treat that view as a view controller just like any other in your ios project uh and and i would even say that uh like the navigation gets even easier because you're still using the old, uh, let's say, uh, navigation uh, components that you have in your project to handle view controllers and so on. Uh, so it was just really, really simple adding a Swift UI view to our uh, UI kit code. Uh, I think the challenge came when we were like, uh, we have like a full feature in Swift UI but we also have to, uh, you know, bring UI kit components to to this UI feature that you know UI kit components that we already have uh, implemented. Uh, and then, uh, you know, once again, Apple has given us amazing tools to do this. Uh, but most of the time, I felt like okay, maybe I could just recreate this in Swift UI, and I won't like. I would spend just a couple of hours, like two hours to recreate this uh, UI kit component and it will work just the same and eventually can actually get rid of that old UI kit component. Uh, so most of the time I, I've been doing that, most of the time I have been you know, recreating the UI components in Swift UI, uh, but it's been, it's been really, really fairly use, easy to use with UI kit. The UI hosting controller really blows my mind on how simple it really is because you can even use it in the playgrounds and just mm -hmm. throw views into a playground view. So you've got almost no overhead. You just simply set up a VStack and say, here, display this, display this, display this, and throw it into UI hosting controller. Yeah, That's yeah. And, and and, and, and it's interesting because, uh, you know, we are still targeting iOS 13. Uh, and I feel like this has been uh, a discussion in the community, like is SwiftUI ready, production ready, right? Mm -hmm. Can we use SwiftUI in production code? And I feel like ever since it came out, it is ready, right? Uh, oh, sure. interesting. There are, there, there are a couple of features that, uh, for example, we don't have lazy V stacks in iOS 13. You will have to target iOS 13, but you can still create views that do not rely on uh, lazy V stacks, and they were just going to work as fine. And and uh, so so like I feel like Swiftry has been ready ever since it came out. And as Paul Hudson That's told us, the uh, the best time to have started Swift UI was to hit the ground running in 2019. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 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 I was just yeah. listening to another podcast where they were saying it is much easier if you're targeting a later version of iOS, later than 13. I guess is it is it right away at 14 that it becomes easier? Uh, 
I feel like uh, I, I guess I, I think so. Like there are a couple of things that you have to do some workarounds to to make things work in iOS 13. So a very simple example, for example, like the the overlay modifier, uh, where you add a view to another view, like a, an overlay of that view. Uh, if you want to use like a like in iOS 13, you don't have an initializer that that takes a view builder. Uh, closure you have to just pass your view so you have to create a property with that view or so on uh, but in ios 14 or maybe ios 15 you have a modifier that takes in a view builder closure and then you can you know just create your view inside that uh, that closure and it's fine so uh, i do feel like if you are targeting uh later ios versions it's going to be easier to do some some stuff but you can still use uh, SwiftUI with iOS 13. Absolutely. I mean, if you consider it, when SwiftUI was released in, in 2019 with iOS 13, it was the first time the public had gotten their hands on it. And as much mm -hmm. as it had been shaken down within Apple, it didn't have the full developer community saying, well, this is a pain point, this is a pain point. What mm -hmm. can you do? So 14, it's not that 13 wasn't ready for for public use it's just that 14 was the first time that there'd really been a user base to say can we have this mm -hmm. and then right. between mm -hmm. 14 and 15 was when there was a a balance between the two internal and external communities to say well let's work together to get this thing to, to continue to grow okay mm -hmm. so what's on your wish list of Oh, I wish this was in Swift UI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so many things. Like uh, I would like to see uh, more. You know, like UI. I, I wouldn't say UI components, but uh, other like bindings to other frameworks that Apple already has. So, for example, my first article uh, at RayRenderer.com was about using Quick Look for views, right? So when you had a file, a PDF, or an image, and then you you will use Quick Look to, to you know quickly look at that file, uh, and yeah, there's still no yeah, and, and there's still no bindings in Swift UI for that. Uh, I guess you could try to 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 create a bridge using the UI Kit component, uh, but it's it's not the same, right? We 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 want to use like. Oh, I don't want to use any of UI kids code anymore. I want to use Swift yes. UI only. Uh, so I guess I would like to see more uh, bindings to those frameworks. And uh, you know, anything else that Apple has stored for us, I'm really excited for it. I'm just like I'm I'm really looking forward to next uh, WWDC. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing iOS 16. Yeah. Now, I feel like somewhere in our discussion and preparation for talking today, Hanan, you said something about, uh, is it reading the Swift source code? Is it reading the Swift mm. UI source code? Um, mm -hmm. So do you have any predictions as to what is going to be announced for us in terms of Swift UI or other developer goodies? at the next dub dub based on this reading uh, i don't think i have any predictions for this uh i do think there's going to be a lot of focus on uh asynchronous code and the newer uh asynchronous uh, uh model uh and they have been hinting this for a while for Swift to six um but uh, I, I I wouldn't say like I, aside from this I don't have any predictions for Swift UI yet. <laughs> Do you follow the uh, the Swift commenting uh, blog? Yes, I try to follow as closely as possible, uh, like the the Swift forums and the Swift Evolution uh, mm -hmm. website as well. Uh, and there there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming out, right? Like for example the. Uh, I think it's called generic parameters. No, was it generic parameters? Oh, I can't remember right now, but uh, it's a proposal to uh, make generic parameters uh, a lot easier uh, on the eye, so uh, with synthetic sugar. So that is something that I'm actually really looking forward to. 
Okay. As, as we're Go talking ahead. about Apple and wish lists and Apple, what's the Tuesday event? Oh yeah, the Tuesday event. Uh, this oh just came up in a in a I meeting forgot. earlier. This is, this is coming up soon too. Yeah. So what? I, so what? What do we think they're going to tell us? Oh, probably new. Probably new uh, iPad. New uh, iPhone SEs. Okay. I don't think we're going to see the iMac at this one. Yeah, I was yeah, saying to teammates either. earlier, like, I, so I finally have a new computer on order. I waited and waited. It was my birthday over the weekend. I was like, now it's time to <laughs> finally get my, my M1. So Happy belated will, birthday. Thank you. Happy so birthday. I hope it's not a new computer just because I just ordered a new computer. No. So. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, there's a site on Mac Rumors that's called the Buyer's Guide. Mm -hmm. And the buyer's it's guide really is really good. good because it tracks what types of updates have been done and when the last device has been released. So it so gives you, you an idea. Is it is it hot? Is it cold? You know, mm -hmm. it, it literally we'll says don't buy, should buy. That's yeah, I, I really recommend that. Um, Probably should have asked you before I ordered. But. <laughs> <laughs> So, so obviously I'm going to, I'm going to completely change gears at this point. We learn this by looking at your social profile and not merely that, but for those of you watching this thing, your shirt, you're a bit of a Disney nut. Yes. Yes. I am. I, I really like Disney and Pixar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how far does that, how far does it go back? Is it, is it a childhood thing? Yes, ever since I was a child, uh, I remember my my parents getting me like uh, video cassette tapes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I think the first movie, I, the first Disney movie I watched was Bambi. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> there's a light. There's a light one for you. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but but the one that actually I, I think the one that that stood with me uh, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's definitely Toy Story. Like Toy Story, oh, yeah. uh, for me, it's one of the greatest uh, Pixar movies uh, ever made. <laughs> it, it made so many advancements in computer graphics on its yeah. uh, on just that film. It, it, it mm. is one of the most amazing ones. Have you made it out to Disney World or Disneyland? Not yet. It's still a dream that I want to to make it true. <laughs> Watch out for the pin trading. There's a Disney has little uh, little pins oh, no for way. everything. Really? For everything, you can get pins with characters, pins with rides, pins, and there's an entire culture of people who trade pins. Oh, no I know. I, I mean, I mean, my, I, my mother went to Disneyland and she brought me a Toy Story pin uh, mm -hmm. that I I, I I I leave it on my 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 TV table. Uh, but that's, that's, I never thought that there was oh this, my this, like, goodness. this thing. It is, it is, it is beyond huge. Pin trading <laughs> from Disney is, it, it's, it's a cult. That That's amazing because I'm, I'm crazy about, pin, uh, about pins. <laughs> that's oh, amazing. wow. Okay. So then this is, you, you definitely have to go to Disney world. There's a, there's a place in Epcot that is just a pin center at Epcot. It's, really amazing and like for an hour they just say show us what you've got and you can trade and and it's it's That's amazing you can actually you can actually go up to any cast member because they're called cast members at disney and mm -hmm. ask if they're willing to trade pins with you that's amazing i i've i've got to go to disneyland <laughs> <laughs> when things get healthier yeah yeah absolutely now I think we're fine now. <laughs> <laughs> now, now is a good time. So, obviously, the question is: Have you thought of going into computer graphics? Oh, I have. I have. <laughs> I think uh, when I started college, uh, it was one of my one of the things I was like, oh, maybe I should get uh, this class about computer graphics and and uh, and and also like video games, but. Uh, uh, like shortly after I discovered that you have to be a, 
mathematic uh, math wizard. Uh, and then I was like, okay, I can't do this. I'm terrible at math. Uh, but who knows? Maybe someday. <laughs> I've noticed the computer graphics is sort of separated into those who can do math on computers and those who can do art on computers. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's well said. I of which can do neither. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm neither. So yeah, me, me too. I, I can do neither. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is there anything else you would like to discuss, Philip? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, do you guys have anything in mind that you guys would like to? Well, we can discuss anything. I just... <laughs> Do you have a um, do you have a dream project that you'd like to work on at Race? At Race, uh, actually, I get I maybe. <laughs> now this is actually, no, this is no like, commitment. This is no commitment. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think like am I like can I really talk about this? Like this was a project that we were talking about uh, a while well, if ago. It's, if it's a project you're talking about internally, I don't want to know about it. I'm just talking about it. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so we just we just say stick to the, to this. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, working on the book was amazing, like really, really amazing experience. Uh, I have yet to uh, work as a technical editor. I think that would be a very interesting experience. Uh, it's really fun. Seriously, it's totally fun. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I I've seen like I've worked with a bunch of people and. Uh, it, it looks very very interesting and and uh, but I, I think uh, one of the things that I, and of obviously uh, being on the podcast it's something that's also amazing so I'm like I'm actually screaming internally like oh my oh my god I'm in the Ray Wendley podcast uh, oh, but, thank you but yeah I mean uh, everything that I can you know help and 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 try new things it's something that i try to embrace so have you thought about doing a video course i i have uh but i think i was scared to even like consider it uh because of my accent and my you know my english is a bit uh rusty right now uh but your english I, is I, great it's... you should definitely consider <laughs> yeah, it. your english and your accent are just fine <laughs> oh thank you thank you so much guys uh, but yeah, I, I thought about it, uh, and maybe who knows? Maybe someday. <laughs> I forget who I was talking to internally, but one of our fellow internal Ray Wonderlick people who mm -hmm. maybe just done their first video course, and they were mm -hmm. assuring me I haven't done video here either, um, mm -hmm. other than this. But that when you do a course similar to when you do an article, right, or a book, mm -hmm. it's really well scaffolded. Like it's a mm -hmm. huge amount of work. Mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. but they really help you, and uh, mm -hmm. so it might be cool just to gain that knowledge set. You know, like then you then you can know. Oh, I actually know how to create video content because you'll get to mm -hmm. learn in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it's actually something that I was very impressed when I started writing uh, to the website because I wasn't aware that we had like a very specific and very structured uh way of writing right aside from like okay the guidelines and okay this is how you should write and these are the rules that you should follow but also like okay we have a technical editor an english editor a final pass editor and everyone has a part in the article and i was like oh this is amazing like uh, it's not something that i'm just going to do it by myself and then just post it on the website no it's a team effort uh, and that's just like amazing. And, and, and absolutely, I think like the, the video team is probably just as organized as the article team. And uh, yeah, maybe like I, maybe I should consider it. Maybe, maybe someday I'll, I'll have a video, video course in the, the website. <laughs> you have to watch the, watch the Discord for what's available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always keeping an eye in there. <laughs> You can always contribute something, and I mean, uh, there's—I believe there are, there are calls regularly that are on the site during the in our newsletter, inviting mm -hmm. people who are 
but just people who listen or watch some of our material to, to possibly contribute as well. So yeah, I I mean like uh, I think I I actually remember when they posted uh, like the, a post about being a co-host for this season. Yeah, and then I was like, oh this, uh, and I saw the post. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should uh, maybe I should <laughs> apply. And I was like, nah, my English is terrible right now. I'll just uh, let someone else do it. And then I saw it was Susanna, and I was like, oh my God, I worked with her. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I saw it and I thought, that sounds super fun because Drew sounds so fun in the happy hours. And I love to talk to people, but I, you know, I probably won't get it. I shouldn't even apply. And <laughs> you see where that I got tried. you? And so, yeah, yeah. Here we are. <laughs> I, there, there's been pretty much not a single opportunity that's come across any Ray Wonderlick channel where I didn't think that sounds fun. You know, a lot of them I realized, okay, it sounds fun, but I'm clearly unqualified. <laughs> but, but the, but still even some of those, I'm like, Oh, I could try this. I don't think I'm qualified. And they will really let you try all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Clearly. And, and so. they, they'll, they'll help you a lot, right? It's not something like, okay, you're not qualified or maybe you're not right, still there, but they'll help you. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. uh, let's do this together. Uh, but I mean, I, everybody wants everybody to succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sincerely. Mm -hmm. and, sincerely. Yeah, absolutely. and that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you, most importantly, we'll take your hands mm. off the keyboard. Mm. What do you do for fun? Oh, besides in watching addition Disney, to Disney, besides, and, yeah. besides Disney films, <laughs> besides watching right, besides watching Disney and Pixar movies, uh, well, uh, I would say I'm an avid video game player. Uh, I really enjoy story-based video games and you know interesting storylines. Uh, but I also I've been trying to be more healthy lately. So uh, aside from going to the gym. Uh, I've been wall climbing, like rough wall Ooh. climbing. Uh, okay. A friend of mine, a friend of mine, started going when he was in São Paulo, and then he came back to Campo Grande, and he was like, "Oh, uh, you should come with me." I was like, "Are you crazy? I can't, I can't climb this. I, 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 I'm, I don't have the physical port for this." And I know oh, it, it will be okay. And I went there like one day, and I was like, "Oh, this is really fun." I mean, aside <laughs> from the aside from the fear of falling and then looking down, like. This is so high, high up in the, in the wall. So uh, really you were fun. going to, like, you go to an indoor climbing gym. It's not yes. like, you're not yeah. like, you didn't try it outside on a mountain the first time. No, no, not yet. Not okay. yet. I'm still, I'm still a beginner. I, I can barely, uh, you know, it can barely climb uh, the wall, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's been really fun. Uh, but yeah, I guess, you know, uh, TV shows are, are something that I really enjoy watching. Uh, just finished the second season of Euphoria, which is amazing. I keep uh, hearing that. Yeah, it's it's really really good, and it's it's also infuri infuriating because you're you're usually like, no, don't do that. It's going to have you know things are going to happen. It's going to be bad things, uh, but uh, it's it's really really good. Uh, but yeah, I guess I guess those are my my things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think the rock climbing looks cool too, but I'm always, I, I think like, I, I, I don't know if I could hoist myself up any of it, you know, <laughs> but you, you guys should totally try it. It's really fun. And once you, it's, it's, <laughs> <Your face. laughs> if you're listening to the audio, you guys, you have to play the YouTube video just to see Drew's face at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Really I should fun. not be climbing walls. <laughs> I think okay. So when we finally they get Ray Wenderlich conferences back, which hopefully will be next year, um, maybe we should suggest that as a team activity, Walk as one of a like host it. of different team activities. I like it. I like it. <laughs> we'll watch and on beat us all at this. <laughs> it, it can be it's, collaborative, it's not competitive. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really fun. <laughs> All right. Hang on. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being on the show this week. It's 
It's a pleasure having you. It's great to see the work that's getting done. And it's a pleasure to hear about how you have infected your team at work with new technologies. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, this has been uh, a blast. <laughs> Now, we can find you on Twitter at Hananinjias, which mm -hmm. I'll spell slowly because that may not necessarily have translated to R-E-N-A-N-B-D-I-A-S. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Susanna, you can find online at Suz Gupta, and I am Podcast Drew. We're beginning to wind down this season. Next episode, it is time to start putting the hosts on the hot seat. And Susanna will be offering us a behind the scene look at the iOS tutorial development process here at WayWendLink.com. Two weeks after that, I will talk about my new personal app that has recently, and I mean recently as in days, hit the App Store and how I ramped up to be an indie developer, and maybe some looks at some early statistics if I'm not already crying and nobody buying my app. As that is, for Susanna, who I cannot do the show without, and thank you again, Hanan, I am Drew, and we will see you in two weeks. In the meantime, back to the Emerald Castle. Ray, back to you. And that's a wrap. Thanks again, everybody, for listening to the RayWendelk.com podcast. We hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to leave a rating on iTunes. See you next time.